Hello. Good afternoon to you. My name is Archduke Bishop Dr. Robert L. Maxwell, Master of Theology, PhD in Theology and Religion. Duke of Pomerania and Livonia, Colonel of the Royal Guard of Pomerania and Livonia, Field Marshal of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry and of the House of Han Zolom. Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of Merit of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry. Scott, founder 2005, Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry. We are the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, the Reformed Pentecostal Anglo Saxon Royal Empire of the Kingdom of God denomination. Our Sunday worship service is 11 a.m. Our Thursday night Bible study is 7 p.m. And dear friends, right now, dear beloved, I'm right now in my prayer closet. So, today we're going to be doing a Thanksgiving sermon. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, ask you to bless and anoint this message you have in the name of Yeshua Messiah through the power of the Holy Ghost. Dear Yahweh, we pray that you would empower us with the Holy Ghost and move us into the sky properly. God's wisdom, knowledge, Help us to see from your perspective. Anoint and bless this message, we pray, and we ask in the name of Yeshua Messiah through the power of the Holy Ghost. Let my preaching and teaching be accepted to you, Ottoman. We ask in the name of Jesus Christos, through the power of the Holy Ghost, Amen. So, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, I give you absolution of all your sin, omission, and commission. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and ask you the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So next, let's get into the Word of God today. So, what is Thanksgiving about? Thanksgiving is about thankfulness. What does thankfulness mean? Thankfulness means appreciation, gratitude, and praise. There's no such thing as a Brady Bunch family. Leave it to Beaver family. It never has. It 
And there will never be a perfect family until the eternal state, when God ratifies and consummates all things, when Jesus Christ returns and consummates all things, and paradise lost becomes paradise restored, the problem of sin and death resolved. There is, everyone has messed up families, dysfunctional families, some worse than others. And a lot of us chase after that false family that never has existed, although we wish it would exist. But I got good news, brothers and sisters. When the earth was Christianized and the golden age of peace and prosperity arrived, Families will be strong and sound, almost near perfect, almost, not quite, because we need, because when Christ has to return, and when the conquering king returns, he's going to deal with the last enemy, which is, the, which is death, the devil, consummate all things, the resurrection, from the everlasting destruction, and some everlasting <clears throat> life and through the sanctifying regenerating work of the Holy Spirit you've been sanctified you're being sanctified and one day you shall be glorified And you will have a strong family. You have a strong family of brothers and sisters in the faith who will be with you in the eternal state. That is with you now. under the community of Christendom. Because not only is because the church is a family and Christ is the head of that family and the community of believers is the family and this community of believers is dysfunctional. Christian families are not as dysfunctional as unsaved families. But still there is dysfunction. And so through the teaching and preaching of the Word of God, through the study of the Word of God, through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the Gospel, the power of the Holy Ghost, we can strengthen our family, brothers and sisters in the community of faith, brothers and sisters in your family. You can But only through the edifying, sanctifying of the Holy Spirit can it be transferred to God has called you. To unite the family. A family that is thankful and grateful. So, uh... How important is it to express thankfulness? Bible reading, 1 Cor 16 to 436. 1 Cor 16 to 436. 
KJV, and he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the Ark of the Lord, and to record, and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel, 5, Asaph the chief, and next to him Zechariah, Jael, and Shemironeth, and Jehiel, and Mattathiah, and Eliab, and Benaiah, and Abedadom, and Jehiel with psalteries and with harps, but Asaph made a sound with cymbals, 6, Benaiah also, and Jehaziel the priests with trumpets continually before the Ark of the Covenant of God. 7. Then on that day David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. 8. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. 9. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. 10. Glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. 11. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually. 12. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. 13. O ye seed of Israel his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. 14. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. 15. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. 16. Even of the covenant which he made with Abraham, and of his oath unto Isaac. 17. And hath confirmed the same to Jacob for law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. 18. Saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. 19. When ye were but few, even a few, and strangers in it. 20. And when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people. 21. He suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. 22. Saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. 23. Sing unto the Lord, all the earth, show forth from day to day his salvation. 24. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. 25. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, he also is to be feared above all gods. 26. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. 27. Glory and honor are in his presence, strength and gladness are in his place. 28. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. 29. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name, bring an offering, and come before him, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. 30. Fear before him, all the earth, the world also shall be stable but it be not moved. 31. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice, and let men say among the nations, The Lord reign. 32. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof, let the fields rejoice, and all that is therein. 33. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. 34. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth for ever. 35. And say ye, save us, O God, with our salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heap, that we may give thanks to thy holy name, and glory in thy praise. 36. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel for ever and ever. And all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. Key Bible verse, David appointed the following Levites to lead the people in worship before the ark of the Lord by asking for his blessings and giving thanks and praise to the Lord, the God of Israel. One 16 to 4. So, being thankful is very important, but unfortunately, thankfulness, I think, is one of the hardest things to do. Especially when you see all the mess you see in your family, in your community, in your church, and around the world. Because not only is a family important, but the family of God is important, and Christ is the head of that family. And we need to recognize that fact that we belong to a family of God in Christendom worldwide. And through their help, through their guidance, through 
prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel and studying the word of God, thankfulness can come out of your hearts. Thankfulness must go before God. <clears throat> and then thankfulness triple uh, triples down. As the world slowly and gradually gets Christianized, ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity. Everyone will be practically thankful and grateful, but yet there's one enemy that has to be defeated before thankfulness can be completed. And that is the last enemy, which is death. Satan, the devil, and the conquering king, Christ Jesus, when he returns, will defeat the last enemy. Then perfection and thankfulness will be established all eternity. Some will be ever, uh, resurrected to everlasting destruction and everlasting life. Some will be resurrected to. No. Look, I was we should always be expressing thankfulness. Certain Levites were appointed to give continual praise and thanks to God. Praise and thanksgiving should be a regular part of our routine, not reserved only for celebrations. Praise God continually, and you will find that you won't take his blessings for granted. There are four significant aspects of thankfulness. Four elements of true thanksgiving are found in this song. Psalm, 1, remembering what God has done, 2, telling others about it, 3, showing God's glory to others, and 4, offering gifts of self, time, and resources. If you are truly thankful, your life will show it. You know where she is? Yeah. And so, these elements are really extremely hard and almost impossible. But the good news is, friends, through the, through the sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost, the sanctifying, regenerating work of the Holy Spirit, He empowers us, God's elect, very elect, to be able to express these important elements of being thankful. And we should apply that thankfulness in our Thanksgiving day. Because thankfulness is really hard. The world, uh, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, God's elect and very elect can express these things in the ups and downs of life and will someday express it for all eternity. Bible reading, Psalm 92 to 115, Psalm 92 to 115, KJV, a psalm or song for the Sabbath day. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. 2. To show forth thy love in kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness every night. 3. Upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. 4. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. 
I will triumph in the works of thy hands. 5. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. 6. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. 7. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. 8. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. 9. For, lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for, lo, thine enemies shall perish, all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. 10. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. 11. Mine eye also shall see my desire on mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. 12. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. 14. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. 15. To show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Bible verse, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening. Psalm 92 to 1 2. Thankfulness ought to be a major ingredient in all our relationships. During the Thanksgiving holiday, we focus on our blessings and express our gratitude to God for them. But thanks should be on our lips every day. We can never say thank you enough to parents, friends, leaders, and especially to God. When thanksgiving becomes an integral part of your life, you will find that your attitude toward life will change. You will become more positive, gracious, loving, and humble. Bible reading, Romans 1 colon 18 23. Romans 1 colon 18 23, KJV. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, 21, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, 23 and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Key Bible verse, yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. The result was that their minds became dark and confused. Romans 1.21 one of the first marks of rejecting God is forgetting to thank him. How could intelligent people turn to idolatry? Idolatry begins when people reject what they know about God. Instead of looking to him as the creator and sustainer of life, they see themselves as the center of the universe. They soon invent gods that are convenient projections of their own selfish plans and decrees. These gods may be wooden figures, but they may also be goals or things we pursue such as money, power, or comfort. They may even be misrepresentations of God himself, making God in our image, instead of the reverse. The common denominator is this, 
idolaters worship the things God or man made, rather than God himself. Is there anything you feel you can't live without? Is there any priority greater than God? Do you have a dream you would sacrifice everything to realize? Does God take first place? Do you worship God or idols of your own making? Bible reading, Ephes 2 to 1 10. Ephes 2 to 1 10, KJV. And you have you quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, too, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, three, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. For, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, five, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, six, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, seven, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, eight, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Key Bible verse, God saved you by his special favor when you believed. And you can't take credit for this, it is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. Ephes 2-8-9 Thankfulness ought to be the prime characteristic in a Christian's life. When someone gives you a gift, do you say, that's very nice, now how much do I owe you? No, the appropriate response to a gift is thank you. Yet how often Christians, even after they have been given the gift of salvation, feel obligated to try to work their way to God. Because our salvation and even our faith are gifts, we should respond with gratitude, praise, and joy. Thankfulness can take on a variety of effective expressions. We become Christians through God's unmerited grace, not as the result of any effort, ability, intelligent choice, or act of service on our part. However, out of gratitude for this free gift, we will seek to help and serve others with kindness, love, and gentleness. While no action or work we do can help us obtain salvation, God's intention is that our salvation will result in acts of service. We are not saved merely for our own benefit, but to serve Christ and build up the church. If is 4.12 So, when it comes to thankfulness, you need to ponder and think about it. Because putting into practice these precepts and principles we learn, not only in our daily lives, but wrong holidays, is so difficult and so hard, but only God's elect can do it and will do it, and their hearts will be focus and concentrating on these precepts and principles and wanting to put them into practice. And so, my friend, only way to become grateful and more thankful, not only but grateful and thankful for our salvation and our great post millennialist future, We need to uh, remember that. Seek God for thankfulness and gratefulness and prayer, praise, proclamation of the gospel, through studying the word of God. And then 
And God empowers you to be grateful and thankful in all aspects of life. But not always, because we fall and we sin and we mistake, make mistakes, but we repent of our sins and get right with God and go forth. And more and more, we will become grateful and thankful, and so will the world, and someday the world for all eternity. Except the small one-third of mankind from beginning to end shall not be grateful and thankful. And wherever lose that possibility when the great white throne judgment day comes. But every one of us will get what's coming to us, good, the bad, the ugly. Nothing to do with salvation but the works we do with Christ. And so we'll receive different responsibilities and rewards and some of us, some of us will be naked as a jaybird. Maybe because we forgot we weren't thankful in certain areas. But the good news is, you seek God, your heart will change, and He will make you grateful and thankful for what He's done for us, eternal life, the Christianization of the whole entire world, ushering in the golden age of peace and prosperity, the resurrection, the great right, throne judgment, and the eternal state. We know that <clears throat> we have a power, the power of, through the power of the Holy Ghost to make each other grateful and thankful as well. And so remember that. And just go before God and say, God, I need, I need to be thankful here and there. Just recognize those certain things that you're not grateful and thankful on. Just ask God to forgive me and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and ask God to you know, empower you to uh, be grateful and thankful in this area. Especially this holiday coming up, this Thanksgiving, this Christmas. And there's going to be conflict. And there's going to be people that you're going to have to tolerate that you don't want to tolerate. But with God on your focus, you will remember what the holiday is all about and be able to be grateful and thankful even in those situations. Just got to ask God to empower you to do it and He will empower you to do it. Empower you to make other people grateful and thankful as well in your own life. He'll power, empower you to do so through the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost. And we'll perfect it one day. So, here, brothers and sisters, know these precepts and principles in our short but brief study on thankfulness, gratitude, appreciation. should be in us continually towards God and what He's done for us and praise, appreciation, gratitude, and praise should be in our hearts daily to be thankful for what Christ has done for us for this great future that is ahead for God's elect and very elect. The thankfulness and for the blessings of a brother and sisterhood of people in all of uh, Christendom, we should be grateful, thankful, and appreciate it, appreciate, have gratitude and praise to God for 
the blessings of the brotherhood and sisterhood of all of Christendom worldwide. God's elect and very elect are worldwide. And we should uh, seek God to empower us to be more grateful and thankful for what he's done in this great post-millennial future that awaits us and the brotherhood and sisterhood of all of Christendom and appreciation of our family. It depends on what kind of family you have, but there might be little things in your life that really meant something. And should end that we should strive to seek God to strengthen, restore, cure, bring about restoration and renewal in our families in Christendom and for the future generation of kids to turn the to reverse the uh, sin of events and raise our kids up with the precepts and principles of the word of God so we can have strong families again but again like I said there's no such thing and it is the Brady Bunch family all families are dysfunctional. Only, only one day it shall not be dysfunctional anymore in the eternal state. So do, brothers and sisters, seek God to make your heart thankful and grateful in the memory of it. What the seasons all about? Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to hide these words in our hearts and minds. Ours to put in the practice of these truths. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. We pray for the Holy Ghost. We pray for healing mentally, physically, and spiritually upon our family which is worldwide. Amen. Pray in Christ Jesus' name. Pray to the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen.